There are some fantastic nutrients going to waste when you cook in your kitchen that you're either throwing away or pouring down the drain that could be used to boost the growth of your houseplants. So follow these fantastic tips on how to make better use of your kitchen scraps so that you waste less in the kitchen and enhance the health of your plant in the process. This is a real winner for your houseplant and your wallet as you're essentially giving your plants some free nutrients. Let's crack on. Did you know that you could make use of the water you use to cook your vegetables rather than pouring it down the sink and wasting it? When you cook vegetables such as peas, carrots or broccoli in a pan, most of the nutrients and goodness in the veggies leaches into the cooking water. This is why nutritionists advise steaming vegetables rather than boiling them to get the max health benefit possible. This means that the water you have used to cook your vegetables can be used as a nutrient boost for your houseplants. So this acts as a very gentle fertilizer for your plants and should give them a boost. If you live somewhere with a water meter, this can be a nifty little money saver too and saves you using additional water on your plants. If you always use cooking water to water your plants, then this is a free source of fertilizer, which is great as an inflation buster for looking after our plants. Avoid using cooking water if you have used salt to flavor your vegetables, because this will harm your plants and always let the water cool down thoroughly. You don't want to be pouring hot water onto the soil of your houseplants. You might initially think that this is a really time consuming process and needs lots of planning ahead, but all you really need is a large bucket that you can keep in your garden or balcony that you refill whenever you boil some vegetables. Another hack that you can easily implement is using banana peel as a nutrient boost for your plants. This can be super useful if you regularly eat bananas and a free way to give your plants a boost in nutrients. Bananas are rich in potassium, of course, which is one of the three key macronutrients you find in commercial fertilizer. So using banana peel in plants is a really useful way of boosting flowering plants such as peace lilies. You want to make sure you process and use the banana peel in the right way. Firstly, you want to make sure you actually eat the banana and not just buy bananas as a fertilizer hack. Avoid throwing the peel on top of the soil of your plants because this will rot and attract things like fruit flies into your house and onto your plants. Likewise, don't bother trying to make a banana tea by steeping the peel in water and then pouring that over over your plants. The amount of potassium that leaches into the cold water will be really tiny and no benefit will really be added. Plus, the resulting mixture from the tea will be really smelly and attract unwanted bugs. Instead, chop your peel up into tiny pieces and work it through your potting soil or compost so they can break down easily in the soil and be accessed by the plant's roots. Even better, if you have a dehydrator, then dehydrate the peel, blend it up and mix it into the compost so that it breaks down even quicker. Another food scrap from the kitchen we can use on our plants is eggshell. Eggshells are a fantastic source of calcium and other micronutrients that are super useful for houseplants and will give them a boost provided we prepare them in the correct way. The thing to remember here is to not just chuck your eggshell pieces into the soil of your plants, this won't do anything. The eggshells need to be prepared so that they can be added to the soil and the nutrients taken up by the plant's roots. When you have used your eggs, such as in baking, place the shells onto a baking sheet and let them dry for a day or so. When they're dry, add them to a food processor and pulverize to a relatively fine powder. You can now mix this into some potting soil ready to use for some planting some plants. Pulverizing the eggshell in this way means that it breaks down much quicker into the potting soil so that it's readily available for the plant's roots to absorb the nutrients. Remember, of course, when you boil your eggs in a pan, you can also use the cooking water as a light fertilizer for your plants in just the same way as your vegetables, as I mentioned in hack one. The water here will contain calcium that is leached into the water through the cooking process, and this will only do good things for your plants. The great thing about this hack, I believe, is that the whole egg is being used. So obviously you're eating the egg, you're using the cooking water, and you're making fantastic use of the eggshell that would otherwise be discarded. 
Rice water is another nutritional kitchen byproduct that can be used to lightly fertilize your house plants and promote plant health because of the minerals and vitamins it contains. Normally, when we cook rice, we first soak the rice in cold water and then rinse through under a tap. We do this to get rid of excess starch, of course. Discarding this water flushes an environmentally friendly source of fertilizer down the drain that could be used to water our plants. So instead, we can capture that water for our plants. Much like the vegetable cooking water hack earlier, rice water contains valuable macronutrients that our plants love. And importantly, it's a friendly source of nutrients that will not burn the roots of your plant, like an organic fertilizer might if we apply too much. The great thing here is that applying this hack is super easy and readily available because we are just using the water that is used to soak the rice so we don't have to wait for the water to cool down. This means we can immediately use the water if we want to. If you have a fish tank in your home, then consider using the water in the tank to water your houseplants. So fish tank water is high in nutrients from fish excrements that your houseplants will actually love. Basic aquarium care includes periodically changing the fish tank's water. So depending on the tank's size and contents, water changes may be needed monthly, weekly, or several times a week. Therefore, the water removed from the tank can be applied to house plants rather than pour down the drain. Water changes are done to a fish tank to remove excess chemicals and other materials that could harm the fish if allowed to build up, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and ammonia, but those materials are super beneficial to plants. It's normally really important to follow the timing and dosage instructions of inorganic fertilizer, but if you're regularly changing your fish tank water, it will be dilute enough to apply to your plants every time you water them. Don't use water from salt water tanks because the amount of excess salt will actually harm your house plants. And also avoid using fish tank water if you've used chemicals to adjust the water's pH or other chemical levels or to treat the fish for diseases. If you regularly drink coffee throughout the day, then instead of throwing away the used coffee grounds, add them to your plant soil. Adding used coffee grounds to the soil of your house plants will be beneficial for the soil and improve the health of your plants. Coffee grounds will add nitrogen to your plant's soil over time, boosting the plant's growth and also improve drainage, water retention and aeration of the soil. The process here is to make your coffee using coffee grounds as you normally would, but instead of throwing out the used coffee grounds, keep them and allow them to cool. When you've collected a week's worth, add them to some potting soil and mix through. The grounds will break down slowly over time, releasing additional nitrogen for your plants to use for stronger growth. Adding additional organic matter to your potting soil will only do good things for your plants, so it's well worth putting used coffee grounds to good use. As well as taking advantage of the amazing free nutrients available in your food scraps, you also want to make sure you don't follow some really bad houseplant care habits that will throw away all your hard work. So click on the link here to find out what they are so you can stop making them yourself.